In this mini lecture, I'm going to give you an overview of the management module, which goes for several weeks. First, I would like to talk about the iceberg model of teacher librarianship. One of the issues with teacher librarianship is that a lot of what we actually do is invisible. It's that bit of the iceberg that's below the water. People see the small part at the top of the iceberg and think that they see the entire role of the teacher librarian. However, what they don't see is the much larger part of the iceberg below the surface. And this often has to do with management of the library and of the collection. The aim for teacher librarians is to not only be really great managers and leaders, but to also communicate with the school community so that they actually understand that the largest part of the role is invisible. A smoothly running library that is vibrant, welcoming and capable of meeting the community's needs doesn't just happen. Over the next few weeks, this module will be addressing various aspects of school library management. This will include looking at strategic management, collection management and people management. Strategic management involves envisioning, developing and implementing policies and procedures. Collection management and development includes selection and purchasing of items, the weeding and culling of items, stock taking, accessioning and cataloguing resources, as well as the general management of the physical and virtual spaces in your library. Finally, managing people involves managing down, up and across. That is, working with your own staff, library technicians, parent volunteers and staff, a student library monitors, working and meeting with senior leadership teams of the school and collaborating with the teaching and support staff of the school. It also entails the marketing, promotion and advocacy work needed to make school library programs and the teacher librarian role visible. Making the role and the library visible depends on how you lead the library and use evidence-based practice, that is, how you gather data on what works in the library and the impact that the library and library staff are having on student learning. There are some first principles that will help you manage all of this without becoming overwhelmed. The first is to remember that the school library belongs to the whole school. The school needs to see you as working for the greater good, that you're constantly communicating and consulting with them about their needs. It can be really easy to become isolated within the school library so it's important that you take every opportunity to see yourself as an integral member of the whole school community. One simple way to do this is to swap one or two library lunch break supervisions with other teachers. This allows you to do duties other than the library, giving you a profile outside of that space and letting students see you in the playground and in other contexts. It also gives other teachers an insight into what managing the library at lunchtime really involves. A second principle is to make sure that your school administration and particularly your principal's life is as easy as possible. If you can demonstrate the ways that you are supporting the teachers by directly supporting the principal, he or she is more likely to view your role as being essential. There's research to support this. Being aware of the principal's goals and the school's goals and keeping the principal updated about trends in technologies, pedagogy and curriculum is a great way to make yourself visible. This might include feeding the principal information by putting something on their desk or sending them an email, by creating an infographic, writing a strategic brief or giving a presentation in a staff meeting. A third principle is to remember that Rome wasn't built in a day. Baby steps is the best way to go, especially if you're new to the school as well as to your TL position. Take the long view and develop your library and your role strategically. If you can see some low hanging fruit, that is some goals that will have great impact and which are easily achievable, by all means do them, because that's a great way to be able to share some achievements quite quickly. But remember that developing the school library presence and your own reputation in the school will take time. One way to look at school library management is to use the POLC framework, planning, organising, leading and controlling. 
You can use this framework in your portfolio when you're talking about what you do when you take up a teacher librarian role or your action plan if you're already practicing as a teacher librarian. There's a reference to this model in the readings. Let's look at planning first. Strategic planning is very important. The strategic plan involves overarching ideas, their aspirational goals. You need to align your library's mission statement, strategic plan and operational plan with the school's plans and keep them regularly updated. A strategic plan may go for between three to five years, although with things changing so quickly, three years might be preferable, while the operational plan sets out how those strategic goals are going to be achieved. A terrific resource which explores strategic planning for school libraries in depth is Developing a Vision by John D. Crowley, which is included in your readings. The operational plan sets out what you're going to do each term. To create the operational plan, you divide the school year up into terms, looking at the school events and library events that happen during the year and marking those in before you begin planning how you will achieve the goals you've identified. The operational plan is a working document. It should be updated every year or even every term, depending upon what is happening. You might take unexpected leave or you might get a new principal. There might be government policies changing or curriculums that are introduced. The operational plan should be flexible. You can use a SWOT analysis to help manage your planning. You'll notice that in the strategic planning text recommended earlier, the book begins with a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses and threats. It's a very common model that many organisations use. The SWOT analysis helps you identify the internal strengths and weaknesses of your context, as well as the external opportunities and threats that may come your way. These may be changes in staffing, changes in school, departmental or governmental policies, new technologies, budgetary changes, and things that happen which you don't necessarily have control over, but which you will have to work with and manage. A part of strategic and operational planning is the development of policy. It's really important that you provide a plan, procedure and rationale for your responsibilities. Having a well-developed policy manual and a set of procedures which explain how the policies are being enacted is not only useful for day-to-day -day management, it is also a lifesaver if your approach to the role is ever questioned or if materials you include in the library are challenged. We'll address challenge materials in more depth when we explore collection development and management. It's important to differentiate between the policy and the procedure. The policy is the principle or rule which guides decisions to achieve your goals. A policy will contain the what and the why. A procedure otherwise known as a protocol or practice, will contain the how, the where and the when. It's the nuts and bolts of the policy. A school library will have a range of policies. Remember, baby steps, you don't need to have all of these on the first day. These policies include a collection development policy, a collection management policy, challenge materials policy, an internet use policy, it may also include a copyright policy, a social media policy, and so on. Barbara Braxton's site 500 Hats has an excellent section on policy writing, and Alia released a manual for developing policies and procedures in Australian School Library Resource Centres in 2018. So there are some great resources to support you in this area. Moving on to organising as part of the management of the school library. This involves creating and implementing the systems and conditions that will allow your school library to run so that the goals identified in the policies and planning can be achieved. This includes having procedures in place for managing resources in multiple media and formats, strategies for the way loans and reference services are offered, an established approach to collaborative teaching, how you organise special programs and events, for example, Reader's Cup or Reader's Circles, whether you offer any professional development for teachers, how the learning spaces, both physical and online, are managed, keeping track of library equipment, as well as budgeting, purchasing, the processing of resources and more. 
there is a lot of organisation required in the teacher librarian role. Leading from the school library is an interesting one. You can definitely be a school leader from within and beyond the school library, but as was said earlier, it's very easy to become invisible if you aren't taking an active role in promoting and communicating what the library offers and also an active role in the life of the school in general. There are so many ways a teacher librarian can lead. You might do so formally if your position is one where you're managing multiple staff, such as head of information services in a very large school where you have other teacher librarians working for you. You can lead informally also, for example, by taking a lead in cutting edge pedagogies and resources. You may take on pedagogical leadership roles. You might lead the school in curriculum and planning. You may lead in areas related to digital technology, such as social media or cyber safety. You might also take a leading role in the development of policy or school-wide strategic planning because of your bird's eye view of the school. Very few roles interact as closely with all year levels and staff as the teacher librarian does. Controlling refers to how you monitor and evaluate your progress. Regularly consulting your operational plans and seeing whether or not your goals are being met, and if not, why. Identifying ways to change and improve services, responding to issues as they arise, and building the strategies implemented into the planning so that the same problem doesn't happen again. Finally, it's very clear that the management aspects of the teacher librarian role are huge, and yet, as we said earlier, they can be invisible. Therefore, evidence-based practice is extremely important. You should continually evaluate your practice, not only to prove your worth, but because as a high functioning practitioner, you need to know that what you were doing is working and that changes you implement are having the desired outcomes. Presenting this information to your principal is an essential part of advocating for your role and demonstrating the value of the school library. You need to be aware of how the library is being used, how many people are using it, for what purposes they are using it, how is the collection being used, and for what purpose. Having baseline data means that when you implement a change or innovation, you can actually measure the impact it has made. We know the value of qualified teacher librarians and well-resourced school libraries, but as this teacher librarian position is not mandated in many states and places in Australia, there is a need to be continually communicating this to make sure that others understand also. So make sure that your school community realises that what they see is just the tip of the iceberg and make sure you add manager and leader to your list of skills as a teacher librarian on your CV.